Well, thank you. I am Marie Slanger, and I'm in the Sponsored Program Office, and I'm the Budget and Program Officer. So I review your proposals with those proposal budgets when you send them in, and I also help you get through the electronic submission process if it's a grants.gov or NSF. We submit those from our office as well. But what I'm going to uh, talk to you about first this morning is more or less the timeline and the flow of what happens once your proposal gets to our office. And Kay put together a timeline, which I get out of your head yeah. I'm sorry, <laughs> on the screen. I want to research on this is on the forms page. chart is trying to help you prepare as you're writing your proposal, giving you a timeline of how to back up from the, the actual submission date of your proposal. Um, so you really need to allow plenty of time to write your proposal, get it submitted to the Ag Budget Office, and then it will get over to our office. We require three days once it gets to our office, and I believe Ona, you would like a minimum of three days yes. and longer if it's a multi-PI <coughs> proposal. Um, so once it gets through the approval process of the Ag College, it will come over to our office. And Kay's passing out the handout, so I'm not going to go through the, the total flow chart here for you. Send that back to you 
um, via email, usually as a scanned copy, unless you're asking for the original signed documents back. And if you need those, then put a note on it when it comes over. <clears throat> and at that point, you'll get the proposal transmittal form signed, and you're to keep that for your internal records. Um, and then you can forward everything on to the sponsor. Let's see. Now, if it's, um, which is the normal, if it's, if it's something that you're the PI's uh, submitting back to the sponsor, that's the normal way of submitting it. So you'll get it back and you send it in. We don't. Then if it's um, an electronic submission, such as grants.gov or National Science Foundation, we submit those from our office, but you need to, uh, if grants.gov, I would imagine, is what most of you would work with as opposed to National Science Foundation, you would submit to us electronically the completed grants.gov application as an attachment, along with your transmittal form. We still need your original transmittal form. And then we will go through and review that, and then we will submit it from our office electronically and let you know a tracking number when we're finished. Um, one thing to keep in mind if you are submitting something electronically through grants.gov is don't do anything funny with the file names on the files that you upload because if you put dashes or if you put symbols in there, grants.gov is going to spit it back and then we have to resubmit. Uh, so after submission, if it's funded, then once we receive your award documents, then we will submit everything that came in that <coughs> original proposal file along with the award documents to grant and contract accounting, and that's how they, you will end up with a project number to be able to access your funding. If it's not funded, um, we appreciate it if you get word that something's not funded and you will notify us so that we can change it in our database, and our records. If it's not funded after probably two years, if we haven't heard anything, then we will destroy the documents. And we'll just keep the original proposal transmittal form on file. And I'm going to just briefly show you the uh, proposal transmittal form. This is a form I'm sure most of you are familiar with. And uh, there, Basically, it, it gives us the information. It's our internal tracking system. So it ties everything together. You'll get a, a proposal number up in this column right here that will be an FAR. So if you have to refer to a proposal, it's good if you can give us that number when you're doing that. It helps. Because we have over 1,200 proposals submitted every year. Um, the other thing on the transmittal form that I would want to caution you about is if you're planning to do a subcontract, either you're receiving one from someone or you're issuing one, it's important that you pay attention to these boxes and check them. Um, and then if there is cost share required, that's important that you let us know there. And then this box over here tells us where this cost share was from. And if you do have cost share on it, we would like to have, if it's departmental or college, we need a letter from your department chair or your college dean. Or if it's coming from some other place, we, we need to be able to follow that in the proposal budget. Um, 